Well, dear friends, here we are with our today's program, Miracles Can Happen. The Bible says that Jesus took upon himself our curses, our infirmities. When he died on the cross and he shouted, it is finished. So at that moment, he overcame all evil, all curses, all evil spirit who cause people to be sick and afflict people with suffering. So on the cross he died, but also on the cross he overcame. If he took upon the cross our curses, our infirmities, and we know that our God is justice, he will not send it back. God is not the one that punishes you. God is not the one who causes you to be sick. No, God has nothing to do with your suffering. The one behind this problem, the one who causes you to cry, the one who afflicts you with problems, is the devil. He wants to kill still and destroy. But on the cross, Jesus took our curses, our sickness, our suffering. So in our today's program, I want to show to you testimonies of people who came in our universal church sick with their lives completely destroyed and coming to the church, learning how to use their faith, miracles happened. Let us now watch testimony, and I'll be back with the challenge. I will stretch out my hand here today, and I'll invite you to touch your computer screen, and the miracles will happen in the moment of the challenge. Let us watch now testimonies, and I'll be back with all of you. Good morning, what's your name? Lakshmi. Good morning, Pastor. So what happened to you? What was in, the problem you were facing? In 2012, uh, I had got lump in my breast and the uh, doctor said it's cancer. So in 2013, I have an operation. And uh, after my operation, my friend Anita came and she said, she was in uh, Canada at that time, and she said, if I was in Fiji, I would never have this uh, operation happen because there's a church, universal church. You can go there, they'll give you the breast of water and give you holy oil and you'll be cured. So I said, it's too late. I already had the operation, but she took me to church in uh, uh, Samabula where Dr. Uh, Pastor Amelio was there. So he blessed me and he gave me water. And when I came, my checking, my so review. So you, you had you had a lump. Yeah. It was found cancerous. Cancer. Yes. And they removed. Yes. The lump. Yes, Pastor. And uh, when uh, I went for my review in two weeks time, and doctor said you have to go through chemo, and I said no, I don't want chemo because I know chemo is very painful. Uh, they give you very strong medicine through needles. I said no. And doctor said, if uh, no chemo, you live only for five years. And uh, Those were the, the words of yeah, the doctors. Yeah. The doctor said, if you do not have chemotherapy, you will live only five, five. years. She did what the doctors asked her to do. She had the, the lump removed from her, from her breast. And many women go through this surgery every year. Every year. The procedure is common among women. Many women do this procedure every year. And the doctors do say, the doctors do say, if you do not have chemotherapy, the chance for you to survive is low. It's a common thing to say. So the doctors told her, if you do not have chemo, you are going to die in five years. That was in 2012. 13. 2013. So, so my five years is this year. So when I went for my checking another review in uh, 
May and Doctor Last May? Yeah, just that, this that year. That was the, the end of the five years. Yes. Without chemo. Without chemo. The doctor yeah. said you'd not live. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then Doctor went through my folder and said, uh, "Huh, you don't have chem uh, cancer." How come you got cancer and you had a very big operation? I said, that's what the doctor told me. And he said, no, no, no more cancer. You go home and celebrate. And uh, I came and told my friends, the chemo was the blessed water for me. The blessed the water? water? For me. Yes. <laughs> the, the blessed uh, water was the treatment <laughs> she <yes>. needed. <laughs> yes. I don't go any high, uh, strong medicine or needle in my body, but just drink the water and I explore. This is my chemo. I don't want cancer in my body. Amen. So clap your hands to our God. Miracle through the blessed water. The doctor said she would die in five years if she did not have chemotherapy. Right? She did not have chemotherapy and she was meant to die last May. <laughs> she was meant to die last May, alive and well. Clap your hands to our God. Congratulations for your faith. She said the water was my chemo. Every, every Sunday I am most surprised by what God does through the faith of people. Congratulations, my dear. Clap your hands to God, friends. Good morning. What's your name? My name is Kini. Miss Kini, what happened to you? Pastor, I've got a vibrate at my baby back. Inside my baby back, it's not one, it's a lot. But the biggest one is five centimeters. I've seen this when I have got the sickness for years. Whenever I go to the hospital for the scan, they say have nothing in my baby back. So I start came to church on end of February. So it's I've got a point on uh, April. So we went back to the hospital with my husband. I start drinking the water, and the things coming out. I found the baby bag on. I found the a uh, bread and my baby bag. So for how, for how long were you unwell, and the uh, doctors were unable to tell you what was wrong? I've been suffering from this from four years. For years, the doctors could not even see what was wrong with her body. Came to the church end of February, April, what was wrong was found out. And then once you knew the name of your enemy, fibroids, what did you do? So I found the things on my baby back. I start, I'm not stopping coming to church. So because when I go to someone and they told me everything, so I said, no, the only thing I should go pray and follow what God's saying and listen to his word. So I just came here every day, every day. So I bring my bottle of water on Sunday from my belief that I not believe what doctors say. I just believe on God, what he's saying. So I follow his word. Then I went back on the on hospital last two months. The vibrate is gone. All of them? All of that because they told me they can't, they seen it. It's not Seen, they might say it's on the inside the baby bag or outside. They say I could do anything, they can't do anything. So I just pray and fasting and read the word of God and listen to what the word of God saying. So the fibroid is gone. The fibroid is gone. gone. After four years suffering with it, clap your hands to our God. It is not a joke, my friends. That's what our God does. Strong at your Him. Miracles to the blessed water. That's what God does. When you manifest your faith, here is irrefutable. You cannot refute what happened to her. Do you have the, the exams, the pictures, the, the, the ultrasound? Yeah, they, they, I saw it in the screen, but they not give it they to me. They never gave yeah, but you saw it. They so told me, because I'm going to lose her, but my faith, I'm not lose her because I'm serving the living God. I said, Lord, if I won the race from my baby's, from my mom's womb, I can win the race too. You can exactly clap your hands to our God. Did you see what God did in the life of those people? Did you see how did they arrive 
in, in our universal church. This is what is happening in all the universal church all over Asia and the Oceania, and also in our succeeding life center. So as you look there uh, at your computer screen, you see the palm of my hands. And I'm placing here the challenge. God performed wonderful and powerful miracles by the hands of the Apostle Paul. I want to challenge you now to touch your computer screen, to touch the screen of your cell phone. There where my hand it is. Touch your hand on the palm of my hand. In the name of Jesus, the pain that have been there in your body, the headache, the spirit of sickness and the curses, I command you right now, leave the bar of this person. As she touched my hand, I command you now, leave you cancer. I'm speaking to you HIV, infections, inflammations, leave this body. The infirmity in the womb of this woman, she could not conceive. Her dream is to become a mother, but she could not conceive. Get out right now. Get out from her womb. The heart diseases. This person has taken medication because she suffers with high blood pressure. I command you right now, spirit of infirmity, leave this body. Leave this man, leave this woman, leave this person. She could not sleep well at night. I command you now, my friend, look at my hand. Look at my hand, and by faith, I am holding now. Whatever problem that you had, the pain, I am holding it now. And I command in the name of the Lord Jesus, get out! Look at my hand. Look at my hand. Be healed. Just look there at your computer screen, at your cell phone screen. Look at my hand, be healed. You who are watching us from all over the world, not only from Asia and Oceania, wherever this program reach you out, look at my hand, be healed, be free. My God, he performed a miracle in your life right now. And if you do you believe, say amen. So my friend, this is it. This is our program, Miracles Can Happen. Do you believe in miracle? So write down on our section comment what happened to you right after this prayer. Write here at our section comment what happened, the miracle that happened when you touched the palm of my hand at your computer screen, at your cell phone screen. If the pain disappear now from your body, search, you can search for the pain. Make the movement that you could not make before. You not find this pain there anymore. If the pain that you had, it have been caused by an evil spirit, at the moment that I place the challenge, this evil spirit left your body. You are healed. You are free in the name of the Lord Jesus. Right here on our section comment, what happened? Your testimony. If you got healed, if a miracle happened now in your life, right here, and I want to share here with all our viewers. Let us watch now testimonies, and I'll come back reading and sharing here with you testimonies of our last program. People who prayed with us on our last program on Facebook, they got healed. 
I have here testimonies that I want to share with all of you. And after the prayer, how do you feel your, your feet? I feel, I feel good. Um, I don't have any bone in my tibia at the moment and neither in my ankle. Yeah. If you believe God can create that bone, it's still. But the pain is no longer there. The pain is no longer there. Do you have faith? Yes, I do. Can I have your crutches? Yes. Try to walk normal. Let's see if Jesus is here. Try to walk normal. Come here. Come. Come. Come with faith. Come with faith. Amen. Amen. Very strong to Jesus. Very strong. Come back. Come back. How do you feel your, your ankle now? Um, it's like heavy. My leg is heavy. My knee feels heavy. But there's no pain. No pain at all? No pain. Who healed you? Jesus. Amen. Amen. You will not have these crutches anymore. Today, you are with no crutches. So how was your week been? It's been good. I've been walking without the crutches. So I remember last week, Sunday, you came here to the front full of pain and no crutches. So how was the pain? What happened with your with your heel? Um, I've got a chronic osteomyelitis, it's a bone disease, and got the doctors took it out, and it was a lot to, and they said it can't be healed. If they put the metal in there, but it could infect it. So they've got nothing in there now, but they said I have to be very careful. And you couldn't walk without the, those crutches? Yes, I can walk without the crutches. And how was this week? You were walking without the crutches since Sunday? Since Sunday, yes. Thank God for that. Yes, I can. Walking normal now? Yes, a little bit, but... <laughs> I mean, so walk here. Walk here. Who healed you? Jesus. Amen. Very strong to you. Very strong. Amen. Amen. Look at me. Congratulations to your faith. I had another problem. I sprained my ankle and because of that, the doctors told me that I was going to be really limited. I had to be on crutches for a few weeks and I wasn't going to be able to, able to do a lot of things. By using my faith, I anointed my ankle, which was really swollen. And in less than a week, I was healed and I was able to go back to my normal routine without being on crutches and, you know, being limited. So I have here to show to you some uh, testimony. People, they are right on our section comments. What God did right after the challenge prayer when they touched their computer screen. I have here Luis Viminda Tag Taglin. She wrote, I am healed in my back pain, Bishop. After you prayed, thank you, God, for the miracle. So, Luz Viminda, she had a pain at her back. But after that, her computer screen and using her face, that back pain left her body. I have here a Sha Baba Gay watching here on Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur, thank you. This helped me sleeping well since I started watching your program. So, Shen wrote to us that since he started watching our program, she started watching our program, she could not sleep, but now she can sleep well. Herminian, Chico, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I am feeling better now. Whole day my stomach so heavy. I feel, I feel heavy, stone in my stomach. See the situation of Hermine. That, that's why I cannot eat more. Miracle happened. 
when I touch Pastor's hand, in my hand, thank you, God. So, Hermínia, she had a problem in her stomach. It was like there was a stone, she said here, in her stomach. She could not eat much. But after touching her screen and pray with eyes, she got healed. I have here Rosanna Begum. I had body pain before watching this prayer, but after hearing this testimony, my pain has disappeared. Lord is great. Amen. So, people, they are writing. Write in our section comment what God did for you after you have been watching this program, Miracles Can Happen. Meilene, she wrote, pain at the back of my neck is gone, Pastor, because I got angry a while ago, but now it's gone. Amen. So God is performed miracles in the life of those who are joined faith with, with us here in our program, Miracles Can Happen. Let us watch now more testimonies, miracles, is taking place in all the UCKD help center all over Asia and Oceania, also in our Succeeding Life Center. You can take a step to come and join us, and you will see it happen right in front of your eyes, because at the time of miracles, friend, it is not over. Jesus is alive. He wants to perform miracles in your life, and bless all of you. Let us watch more testimonies, and I'll be back with all of you. Um, I was like sick just a couple of weeks ago. So um, I went into the hospital, so I got hospitalized. Um, when I went in, they said, um, I have like 80% chances of having TB. Um, so straight away, so what would happen is like, sometimes I couldn't breathe, and um, I'd cough very, like, very consistently. Um, and then what started happening is um, the cough got worse. And, um, and then my throat would get inflamed. So when that happened, it's like I couldn't breathe and um, I'll go into like an asthma attack. So when I went, they said, you know what, um, we're gonna hospitalize you, I said, okay. So I said for about four days, um, and while I was there, like I got really worse. And then they said, look, so what they did is they even isolated me because they said I was contagious. Um, and then what they did is they said, um, look, we're gonna run tests and see what you have. Um, on the first day, it came back as, it's definitely almost it's TB, but we're not sure. So they kept running more tests like every single day. Um, but what would happen is like at night and during the morning, um, it would be very hard for me to sleep um, because my chest would get really tight, my throat would close and I couldn't breathe, I couldn't do anything. And the thing is like, um, they, 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 like they weren't allowed to give me medication because I didn't know what it was. But then I was like, you know, struggling and suffering. Um, so then what happened was, um, Miss Bruna came in with some of the assistants and, um, and she bought some water. I had water already there, so she just blessed it and prayed for it. So then what I would do is every night I'll drink that water. And then one of the nights um, I had the attack and it was like around three in the morning. Um, and so what happened was I had the cough, um, but the cough got really, really worse. And then um, my throat got closed, so then I couldn't breathe, but then there was no nurses around and I kept ringing the buzzer but no one was coming um, then when she got there she gave me um, a saline oxygen mask to take um, but that didn't help at all um, and then so what happened was then I couldn't I couldn't talk so I couldn't tell exactly what was happening I was just you know just like suffocating um, and then she came in and said okay look there's no doctors around I can't find anyone I don't know what to do but what I'm gonna do is give you um, like painkillers um, so when that happened, like it just my cough got worse, and um, like I just kept crying because, and she just kept telling me. At that point, she was panicking because she knew what to do, and she kept telling me to breathe. But the thing is, I, I looked at her because I couldn't talk, and I just kept looking like Mike because I couldn't breathe. Um, and then she ran outside and came back. And then th at this point, she was panicking. I could see in her face she was panicking, and I was hanging on the side of the bed because I couldn't breathe. The air was stuck in my throat, um, my neck, like my throat inside was all closed. And in that moment, I just said, 
like, you know, um, mentally, because I couldn't speak either. So she said, like, God, look, she can't do anything. <laughs> I can't do anything. Um, what am I going to do? I said, look, God, if it's your will to take me, then just take me now. I'm ready. But um, look, if you still want me to be here, then I don't know, find a way for me to breathe because it's getting worse now. Um, so then she ran outside and got medication. And when she came back, she said to me, take this. So when I took the medication, you got stuck. Um, and the water wouldn't go down because the medication was stuck right here. So now I was not breathing at all. And I kept going in and out of consciousness because the medication got stuck. And I just said, God. And I looked over to the water that Miss Bruna blessed earlier. And I said, look, it's all or nothing at this point. You know what, this medication's not working, but I'm gonna use that water. And when I use that water, not only will it go down, but this cough is gonna go away immediately. I don't accept it. So I took, um, the medication was still stuck. And I took the water from the, um, the table and I told her to open it for me. And once I drank um, the water, like it went down. And then within like five minutes, I felt like so much better. Um, and then when the doctor came in the next day, um, I was still laying half, you know, half dead in the bed. But I, but then they kept giving me medication that would get stuck. And I said, God, from this day, I'm not taking that medication because it's not helping me. And then when, when I got, um, even when I got released, I still didn't know what, what it was. But all my tests came back as negative. That didn't have to be at all. And they said, we don't know what you have, but all we know is you're clear. You can go home. And when I came home, I came straight to the church. And I said, no, I'm going to go to the church today because, you know, um, that's like where I left, I'm going to come back. And when I came back, I sat at the back and the exact same thing happened. I had the same attack again. Um, and then one of the sisters was driving to a hospital. I said, I'm not going to the hospital because I just came from there. And if I go, they're not going to give me anything. So I went home and, um, and I drank. And again, I had the water. So I drank the water and a couple of days it kept happening, but I drank the water. And it's been like two weeks and nothing I haven't had that, like nothing. And in June, um, July, I go for the checkup. I want to invite those of you who are watching us for you to buy and prepare to bring this Sunday now in one of our universal church all over Asia and the Oceania, also in our Succeeding Life Center, a bottle of water like this one that I have here. When you come this Sunday at the door, you are going to meet a pastor or one of our assistants, where they are going to ask you to do this. Look here. They are going to ask you to open your bottle of water. And we are going to place the inside a drop, which we call the drop of miracle. And when we pour the drop of miracle inside of your bottle, and in the service, we are going to ask you to drink from this water, believing that after drinking from this blessed water, a miracle will happen in your life. All the testimony that you saw, the pastors interviewing those people, those miracles happen in their life after drink from the blessed water. So we come here to the end of our program, Miracles Can Happen, and I believe that you are all blessed in the name of Jesus. See you the next time. Bye-bye. The Campaign of Israel is here to awaken the faith of those who believe in the living God. If the Word of God is true as we believe, then as in the days of Elijah, the fire must come down from heaven through the ultimate expression of faith, sacrifice on the altar of God is required for this to happen. Only then, as Elijah prayed, God answered with his fire. Aneni Adonai Aneni, Viadu Ha'am Hazet, Ki Atah Adonai Ha'Elohim. A life for life.